Yeah, maybe we can start. So welcome to this week's APRG seminar. Uh, we are very pleased to have Margit Rosler from Paderborn. She will be talking about the Laplace transform in the Dunkel city. So, Margit. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for your introduction and also for your kind invitation to this uh, seminar. So I'm very pleased to be able to give this talk. Uh, and of course, it's uh, 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 nice not to not uh, that we don't have to travel, but on the other hand, of course, it would be even better to see <laughs> each one, everyone. So I can see only uh, one uh, person who is just speaking and uh, uh, but well, uh, I think it's fine. So yes, I would like to talk about uh, uh, some results, which are in part uh, joined with my uh, current PhD student, Dominic Brenneken. And it's about uh, the title of, is, is, is very rough about the Laplace transform in the Dunkel setting. Uh, so uh, let me start with the motivation. So this is actually a project which is motivated by the analysis on symmetric cones and I would like to uh, just touch here not on the very general setting but uh, restrict uh, to the setting of matrix cones so cones of positive definite matrices and uh, have a little bit of look into that uh, the analysis uh, that's going on there and some history uh, so uh, we consider the space of hermitian n times n matrices over uh, the real complex or quaternionic numbers uh, so these I'll denote by H, uh, H and F. So here X equals X star, where X star is X bar transpose. And this is a Euclidean vector space, uh, so a real vector space with essentially the rays, but uh, in the quaternionic case, we still have to take the real part, the rays of X, Y need not be real. So real part of uh, the rays of X and Y. And inside the space of Hermitian matrices, uh, there's a cone of positive definite matrices, omega NF. And actually, this cone uh, is a homogeneous space, G mod K. So uh, we have a group G, uh, which is um, yeah, basically, uh, the, uh, basically the automorphism group of, of, of the cone, but its identity component uh, usually taken. So it's GLN plus over the reals and GLNF, if F is the complex numbers or the quaternions, and a maximal compact subgroup, which stabilizes the identity is SON, or the unitary group over the complex numbers or the quaternions in the other two cases. And the action of G is uh, just why X goes to G, X, uh, G star, and this is a transitive uh, action. So actually we are having here a Riemannian symmetric space, but G is not semi-simple, but uh, reductive. And uh, H is an example of a so-called Euclidean shortened algebra and omega uh, so-called symmetric cone inside. But this will be not really relevant for our talk. I will just mention it sometimes. So and now in the analysis on, on such cones, uh, the Laplace transform is a very important uh, uh, tool. So for locally integrable functions on so omega, one defines the Laplace transform as usual. Yeah, we have a cone and we integrate uh, the exponential function uh, or functions uh, which are locally integrable against uh, uh, the exponential function with negative exponent. So then uh, this uh, converges uh, for elements from the cone and, and uh, nice uh, functions f, which are sufficiently nice. So uh, this is a very uh, important tool, as already mentioned. And uh, now, uh, if we are doing analysis on uh, symmetric cones, uh, in particular radial analysis, where we are interested more not in, in the matrices themselves, but rather in their spectra and have structures which depend possibly only on the spectra of the matrices. Then in doing such analysis, but also in general, actually the fundamental objects in the analysis are the so-called spherical functions as on every Riemannian symmetric space. And these are parameterized by uh, some uh, elements, spectral parameters from C to the N. 
and they are given in terms of uh, means over the action of the group K. So this is more or less unitary group. Yeah, it acts by conjugation. And we take here uh, the so-called generalized power functions. So these just uh, generalized usual power functions in n variables. And uh, uh, they are written here explicitly uh, in terms of the principal minus of the determinant. So notice the determinant of a positive definite matrix is positive. The principal minus, uh, so this is the smallest one, and then they are increasing. The principal minus are all positive. We can take arbitrary powers, and this looks a bit strange, uh, but it is designed uh, uh, so that for a diagonal matrix X with diagonal entries Xi1 to Xi n, this power function just becomes the product of the powers of the Xi i's. So the usual power function Xi to the lambda. Yeah. Okay, and we take these power functions and take uh, the means under the k action, uh, and this gives uh, the spherical function. So this is, of course, what, what is, uh, if you know, the semi-simple Lie theory, this is a variant of Harish Chandra's integral formula. So by definition, the phi lambdas are k-invariant, uh, which means they depend only on the eigenvalues uh, of the argument. And now uh, there's an important formula, uh, uh, which is a core uh, uh, core issue in the analysis on symmetric cones. That's the Laplace transform formula for power functions. So uh, we take the Laplace transform of such a power function delta lambda, but we multiply it with a certain density uh, here delta x to a certain negative power dx. So here the constant d is a dimension constant that's just, uh, in our case of cones, the dimension of f over r. So it's 1, 2, or 4, uh, depending on, on whether we take the real numbers, complex numbers, or quaternions. And if we uh, take, yeah, we have then to be a bit careful that uh, lambdas are not too small. The real parts have to be large enough So to, uh, in order to get a nice convergence for all y from the cone. So here y is from the cone again. And uh, uh, this Laplace transform uh, reproduces the power function, but the argument is inverted. Yeah, here we have y and here get, we get the power function at y to the minus one inverted up to a factor. And the factor is the so-called gamma function of the cone. Uh, which is due to Gindikin, um, who did a lot of work in the analysis on, on, on symmetric cones. So you get the gamma function as an integral, the definition of the gamma function just as the one variable. Gamma function, if you take y equals one here, then this is uh, this factor vanishes and you have the gamma function. And so you have just e to the minus x1, which is trace of x integrated against that power. Yeah. Okay. So, and now uh, when we uh, take means, k-means, uh, uh, then we get the same formula as here, the same Laplace transform formula for the spherical functions, yeah, instead of the power functions. Okay, and, and if you know, for example, the, the, there's a Bible for the analysis on symmetric cones, which is the book by Faro and Kurani. And if you look there, you see that, that this, this is a very basic formula, uh, uh, which uh, has then many, many consequences in the analysis. Okay, uh, so the spherical functions um, uh, have, uh, there are special uh, cases of, uh, of spectral parameters where the spherical functions are actually polynomials. So if you consider them as functions of their eigenvalues, they are polynomials in n variables. And uh, as a matter of fact, phi lambda is a polynomial if and only if lambda is a partition of length at most n. So we shall always denote the set of partitions of length at most n. So these are just n tuples of ordered natural ordered n tuples of natural numbers. Uh, I always denote them by lambda n plus. So and these are uh, the spherical functions which are polynomial and are called the spherical polynomials of the cone. Now uh, uh, these spherical polynomials are. Uh, of 
aspects of interest, but they are in particular also interesting related uh, to the theory of symmetric uh, functions and, and, and orthogonal polynomials. So it was observed, I think, first by MacDonald, uh, that uh, the spherical polynomials as functions of, of the eigenvalues, so real as, a, uh, as polynomials in n variables, belong to a larger class of well-known polynomials in, in the theory of symmetric functions, namely the so-called check polynomials. So I denote here by C lambda k, the check polynomials in n variables of uh, usually the index is called alpha is one by k in usual notation by I, I denote them differently with the k up there where k is in the case of our spherical polynomials it's just d half so d was the dimension constant and so this is just one half one or two and here I have a normalization because the spherical functions take the value one at the identity. So I have to renormalize the check polynomials <coughs> a different normalization. And uh, so here this uh, underline one is just the vector with uh, identical components one, one, one. Yeah. Okay, so these check polynomials show up here with uh, specific uh, indices, parameters, but they exist for arbitrary non-negative or uh, uh, parameters um, and are important in algebraic combinatorics. They are symmetric and uh, they are homogeneous, uh, where the homogeneity degree is just the weight of lambda. And uh, for n equals one, they do not depend on k, they are just the usual powers. For arbitrary n, if k equals 1, they are the sure polynomials, which are, of course, well known in the representation theory of GLn over the complex numbers. Yeah, this is just the case d equals 2. For k equals 1 half, we are in the matrix cone cases having the real numbers. And then they are called the zonal polynomials, which are important in multivariate statistics. And uh, I should mention here, I wrote uh, here with a normalization. Um, I like the normalization, and this will also be relevant later on. They can, uh, whether normalized, I mean, that's not trivial, but it is possible to normalize them such that the sum over all C lambda, where the index lambda is of weight M, uh, is just the uh, polynomial, which is uh, the sum of the xi's to the m. Yeah, here you see it's homogeneous of degree m, of course. Yeah. So they can norma be normalized in this fashion, but there are various normalizations for the check polynomials around. Now, uh, in uh, so, so um, special functions on symmetric cones and particular special functions of matrix argument uh, are important, as I mentioned already, for example, in multivariate statistics. And uh, there are many special functions uh, which are uh, just defined uh, involving spherical polynomials instead of the usual monomials. We will come to such. So in particular, hypergeometric functions of, uh, of matrix argument. Okay, so now let's take a look into the k-invariant situation uh, and consider the Laplace transform for k-invariant functions. So we take a function on, on, our on our cone of positive definite matrices omega, which is k-invariant, which means that it just uh, depends on, on the eigenvalues of its argument, which are strictly positive. So uh, if we collect them to a vector from uh, R to the N, they are in R plus to the N, where R plus is the positive uh, real numbers. Yeah, and now if we calculate uh, the Laplace transform of F at Y, uh, here is the formula again, then uh, this integral, we can introduce polar coordinates, and then the integral splits. Uh, first, uh, we take uh, a mean over uh, uh, the group K, so, so we take the, actually we integrate over the K orbit of a diagonal matrix Xi, so here Xi from R to the N is identified with the diagonal matrix with the corresponding identities, we take the K action, U Xi U to the minus one, uh, scalar product with Y, 
and uh, integrate uh, over the k orbit. And f is not uh, involved here because it just uh, is it's invariant under k. So we have here f little xi. Uh, and then we get a term which is just the functional determinant on the, the polar coordinate transform. And this is a power of the van der Mont determinant. And here again, the dimension D shows up. Yeah? OK, so uh, and here this uh, uh, underbraced function here, this, uh, this integral of the exponential function, uh, yeah, as a function of y, this is again k invariant, so it depends only on the eigenvalues of y, which I call eta. And this is a nice special function, which I call here zero of zero. It depends on d, uh, so on the, uh, again, if we are in real complex quaternionic numbers. And it can be written as a series. So if you expand the exponential into series and use a product formula for the spherical polynomials and use that they can be written as check polynomials, then we get this series here on the right side. So we sum up over the partitions, uh, the products of uh, yeah two check polynomials. We have check polynomials in variable xi and variable eta, some normalization, and here a factor which yields the convergence. So uh, this is called a zero of zero, and uh, it exists for arbitrary k, not only k equals d half, of course. Yeah? Then one should um, think about the convergence, but in this case, this is well settled. So we get here uh, so a uh, special function, which is uh, uh, in terms of a series. And actually, there are analogous results, of course, not only for our matrix cones, but for arbitrary symmetric cones. You will always get a, a series in terms of the check polynomials. And the parameter is always given in terms of the so-called Pierce constant d of the cone. Now it uh, is a very natural idea, and this uh, was an idea first by MacDonald in the 80s, uh, where multivariate special functions came up to generalize radial analysis on symmetric cones by replacing uh, this um, half integer d half by a continuous parameter, Yeah, which I already mentioned several times now that, of course, we can do that. But then the point is to get nice results. And uh, so he, he set up a program uh, at the time and wrote a manuscript um, where he introduced the generalization of the Laplace transform. Now in the uh, in, in the setting we are having here. So here we are integrating over R plus to the n, the zero F zero hypergeometric function uh, is the kernel of the Laplace transform. Yeah, and then we have this weight in addition. And he generalized this to simply arbitrary values of the parameter k. So it's written here. Uh, and we have here a, a weight with an arbitrary parameter k. Yeah. Uh, and now here already uh, the convergence remained open until very recently. So this is a series which is not so easy to estimate. Uh, and uh, the convergence was an open uh, issue for a long time. This was one problem in his notes. And the other problem uh, is that most of his results uh, are really uh, resting on a conjecture which he was not able to prove. And this is just the formula uh, for the Laplace transform of check polynomials in this general setting. So he conjectured that for, for uh, the Laplace transform, this generalized Laplace transform of check polynomials, yeah, here one multiplies with the power of this delta function, delta x, the product of the components, which just resembles the determinant. And uh, I have here an index mu naught, which will show up. That's just for abbreviation. Uh, uh, and uh, we have here shift by this mu naught. But basically, we take a power of the delta function times the check polynomial, take the Laplace transform, and then this reproduces, uh, recall this uh, for the spherical functions we had before on a cone, the Laplace transform, it repro reproduces the check polynomial at the inverted argument, and again with the, some delta, uh, power of the delta function uh, in addition, and a factor, a gamma factor in front. So gamma n is a multivariate gamma function which generalizes the gamma function of a symmetric cone. And here again, the underlying symbol denotes that I take the vector mu with identical components. 
So this was his conjecture, which is true for symmetric cones from the Laplace transform of spherical functions and check polynomials, but he could not prove it in general. And so uh, these notes were never published, but they were put on the archive only uh, in, in uh, uh, less than 10 years ago. And, and uh, this was uh, uh, the time when I got interested a bit in this subject. Uh, and uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, of course uh, the manuscript was already circulating uh, among certain people, and uh, in particular um, uh, Baker and Forrest, uh, Forrest's mathematical physician, uh, they were uh, working with multivariable special functions in the study of quantum collateral Mose models. Uh, and uh, so they observed that the kernel of McDonald's Laplace transform, so the zero F zero K function, uh, coincides uh, with a function which shows up in rational Dunkel theory, which was just very fresh at that time, which shows in up in rational Dunkel theory associated with the root system a n minus one, and it's actually a, what we call now a Bessel function uh, in this theory. And they also had a proof of, of McDonald's conjecture C in one of the papers, but this proof is, is, uh, is not rigorous uh, and they never could uh, were able to manage the convergence issues, but also they have several many formulas which are not really proven, but uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like a bit, uh, uh, there remain questions. So our goals, my goals, were to get a ritual treatment first of McDonald's Laplace transform in the context of Dunkel theory and settle convergence issues to get a better proof of conjecture C, which I we did too recently, and to settle McDonald's program and develop Dunkel analysis actually in line with the analysis on symmetric cones, where there are actually many, many parallels. Okay, so I have to come to Dunkel theory. Let me uh, give some uh, general uh, words on that. So Dunkel theory is a generalization of classical Euclidean Fourier analysis, as well as the radial analysis on Riemannian symmetric spaces. And many of you, several people of you in the audience are well experienced with it. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's not too bad to, to, uh, to tell a, bit about, a little bit about it. So the fundamental ingredient are Dunkel operators, which are commuting differential reflection operators, uh, which are associated with root systems. So there's a rational variant of the theory going back to work of Dunkel, Optum and Dieu, corresponding or generalizing analysis on Euclidean type symmetric spaces, and there's trigonometric Dunkel theory going back to Heckman, Optum, Charetnik, and others, where we are generalizing the theory on compact and non compact uh, symmetric spaces, at least radial analysis on them. And the decisive point is that the invariant differential operators one is usually having on the symmetric spaces are replaced by Dunkel operators, by commuting algebras of Dunkel operators. And in these differential operators, there are parameters, so-called multiplicities, and these discrete dimension parameters may now take uh, continuous values. And so the spherical functions uh, generalize to multivariable analogs of classical one variable sp spherical fun uh, special functions like Bessel functions, Jacobi polynomials, and so on. So in one variable, one knew for a long time that the spherical functions of a sphere or of a hyperbolic space do not just exist for these uh, parameters which show up there, half integer, but for continuous ranges. But in higher dimensions, uh, this was new in the late 80s and, and 90s. So uh, I will be mostly be involved with rational theory here. So the setting is, uh, the general setting is, we have a root system in R, for simplicity in R to the N, reduced and not necessarily crystallographic root system. So a finite subset of R to the N without zero. And then we have two requirements uh, for each root. Uh, the only multiples of the root, which are also contained in the root system, are itself and it's negative and all the reflections corresponding to roots. So in the hyperplane, uh, reflection S alpha is a reflection, the hyperplane perpendicular to alpha, 
leaves should leave the root system invariant. So then uh, the reflections in the roots generate actually a finite subgroup of the orthogonal group. This is the associated finite reflection group, also called Weil group. And it also leaves the root system invariant. And then we need parameters, and these are encoded as so-called multiplicity functions, k. So k is in general a complex function, uh, which is required to be invariant under the on, on the, or so to say, constant on the Weyl group orbits of uh, in the root system. So the example, the only example we shall deal here is root system a n minus one. It's written down here. Uh, so we have the differences of, of the standard basis vectors and the corresponding reflections are just uh, the exchanges of the coordinates here, xi and xj. This generate the symmetric group in n uh, variables, which acts by permutation of the coordinates. And we have only one multiplicity parameter, k. So here it's important for our issues uh, to note that the span of the root system is not all of R to the N, but it's a hyperplane perpendicular to the constant vector one. And we always assume that K is non-negative uh, and fixed, and we shall often not use it in our notation. So the Dunkel operators associated with the root system and with K are modifications of the usual directional derivatives. Uh, so Dunkel operator in direction Xi is directional derivative in direction Xi plus uh, sum of uh, uh, yeah actually divided difference operators Fx minus Fs alpha x divided by alpha x coupled uh, by the multiplicity parameters and some uh, directional part alpha Xi. So here we sum over a positive subsystem of the root system, which just means we take those roots which are contained uh, in, a, in a fixed half space. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so now it's important, an important result on, of these operators is that they are commute uh, and they have nice mapping properties. So these uh, divided differences behave nicely just as uh, usual directional derivatives uh, uh, on polynomials, on smooth functions, on Schwarz functions. Uh, they are uh, uh, they are continuous on the Schwarz space and also then on the space of tempered distributions and so on. Now, as they com commute, uh, one may ask for a joint uh, solution of the for a solution of the joint eigenvalue problem, and uh, such exists. So, for each spectral parameter y, complex parameter y, there's a unique analytic function f, uh, which you call e uh, with our spectral parameter y, and r to the n, which satisfies the joint eigenvalue of this operator with a normalization condition at zero to have value one at zero. Now this is the so-called Dunkel kernel and it's actually holomorphic in both arguments. It's symmetric in its arguments um, and it satisfies certain further uh, properties like a scaling uh, invariance. You may shift scaling parameter S, a complex parameter from the left side to the other, right side and there's a wild group invariance. If k equals zero, then these are just the partial directional derivatives, and the Dunkel kernel is the usual exponential function, which is here always written as a bilinear form, understood as a bilinear form. Now, uh, one may take while group means uh, in the space variable, and uh, this leads to the so-called Bessel function, which I mentioned already. So we take a while group mean of the Dunkel kernel in uh, the space variable, um, and uh, then it actually becomes also invariant in the y variable, not so relevant. But uh, what is relevant actually, that is for crystallographic root systems and special values of k, uh, half integer values, uh, the associated Bessel functions occur as spherical functions of symmetric spaces of Euclidean type. So the simplest example would be r to the n with the action of son, then we get one variable Bessel functions, and this is just a special case of the rank one case here. 
root system is plus minus one in R. The vial group uh, consists just of two elements. Uh, the reflection is just Sx equals minus x. And then the Bessel function is a one variable Bessel function, zero F1 Bessel function uh, of this argument here. And um, yeah, uh, it depends on, 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 on this multiplicity parameter. Yeah. So for root system a n minus one, uh, the Bessel function uh, can be written, and this is what was observed uh, by by Baker and Forrester as a series of uh, check polynomials here with a parameter k. Check polynomials with parameter k are a multiplicity parameter, so it coincides with the zero f zero function we had before, and this is exactly the bridge be between McDonald's program and Dunkel theory. The kernel of McDonald's Laplace transform is a Dunkel Bessel function. So let me just uh, step aside for a while. There's an uh, important and, and far reaching harmonic analysis uh, related to Dunkel operators. So uh, one needs a weight, a weight function, r to the n. The Dunkel weight is uh, in, given in terms of uh, uh, the roots take uh, scalar products uh, of alpha x uh, and then in the powers the multiplicity shows up. If the root system is a n minus 1, this is just the weight function we, we had before in the definition of McDonald's generalization of the Laplace transform. And in the Dunkel transform is then defined as an integral transform with respect to the Dunkel kernel and uh, uh, this weight function. And uh, it is known that it behaves nicely for such arguments where x is real and xi is real. So it's bounded by one for all arguments. And uh, there's a rich harmonic analysis, which de was developed mainly in the 90s, which is very close to, to classical Fourier analysis. OK, so but now we would like to come to the Laplace transform. And this is more recent. So we always assume now that the root system is a n minus one and the multiplicity function is non-negative. And uh, in this case, I mentioned already, the span of the root system is not full. It's just a, a, a hyperplane. And this is important to assure uh, nice decay properties of the Dunkel kernel on the cone r plus to, r plus to the n where we want to have uh, which is now the cone for our generalized Laplace transform. So um, if uh, x is inside r plus to the n and uh, set is a complex uh, uh, variable, uh, which is uh, yeah, which is large enough, then we have exponential decay. Um, so if s is great, equal zero, as larger than zero, then we actually have exponential decay, and otherwise we have nice exponential bounds. Uh, and this is exactly what one needs to get nice properties of uh, the Laplace transform, which is written down here. We integrate a function f against now, yeah, not I do not integrate against the Dunkel kernel, but against the Bessel function, uh, not against the Bessel function, but against the Dunkel kernel, yeah. So uh, this is a uh, uh, little just a bit more general. Hmm? Just a question. So the bound on the Dunkel kernel E. Yes. Uh, this is true only for the AN type root system. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, I, I uh, can I, I do not think that there are similar bounds, for example, in the B case, because uh, the, the root system and uh, so, so you have uh, um, at least I guess so. Yeah, I, I did not really try hard, uh, but I, I think it's it, it is just for 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 a yeah. One could try, but but I would not be really uh, confident. <laughs> so here one also needs uh, some either some some integral representation of the kernel or also some decay properties by by Marcel Dieu. Uh, so the um, variants, but important an important ingredient is the factorization of the Dunkel kernel. With an exponential factor in the free direction. So if I yes. if I go in the free direction here, so s times constant vector one, yeah, then I get here an exponential factor, and this is what what helps a lot to get such bounds. 
So then we define this Laplace transform, yeah, uh, and uh, we get nice uh, uh, convergence properties uh, due to these bounds here. So if F is exponentially bounded, say like here, then the Laplace transform of F becomes holomorphic on, on, on the associated right uh, uh, half space. And now uh, it has nice properties. Uh, so there's a Cauchy inversion theorem. If the Laplace transform is integrable over such a sort over some right half space, yeah, with respect to this variable y, in the, so it's like a generalization of the uh, of a of a parallel to the imaginary axis in one variable. Uh, then we can recover the function from its Laplace transform by again integrating against the Dunkel kernel. And uh, uh, this also shows that uh, the Laplace transform is injective. So if uh, it is zero on some subspace, such a subspace where the real part equals s, like here, yeah, then then I have here zero and 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 f equals zero. Uh, the Laplace transform can also be extended to tempered distributions. Um, so if u is a tempered distribution which is supported in in this close count r plus to the n, then for a complex set which with positive real part, we can define the Laplace transform of u at z, which is a function which is obtained by applying u to a modification of the Dunkel kernel. And so this can, the Dunkel kernel decays in directions of r plus to the n in the cone, yeah. And then we can uh, multiply with a cutoff function for this cone, which is zero in uh, outside of a small neighborhood and get the Schwarz function uh, in total, yeah. Okay, so now uh, this is just Dunkel uh, Laplace transform, but actually uh, we would like to get uh, an analog uh, as a goal uh, for the Laplace transform function for spherical functions on a symmetric cone. So uh, this was the, fun uh, the, the formula I started with. We had the Laplace transform function for the power functions and for the spherical functions on our matrix cones. And the question is, which objects replace the phi lambda? And these will become hypergeometric functions of type a n minus one, or we can take more generally uh, the Cheretnik kernel. So now we uh, get a little bit into trigonometric Dunkel theory. Uh, and uh, here again, type a, and here we have to fix a positive subsystem. Uh, the operators are not dependent of the choice of the positive system. And here is the natural choice uh, in, in when working with, with orthogonal polynomials. And again, the multiplicity is fixed. Then uh, the Cheretnik operators, trigonometric Dunkel operators, and now I, I consider them on R to the N which are associated with this positive system and the multiplicity are again modifications of the directional derivatives uh, by some here is just some multiplication operator where the so-called while vector associated with the positive system comes in and then there are again divided differences but they have an, uh, 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 the denominator has an exponential form here and here t is uh, an argument from r to the n and directions xi are also allowed from r to the n and uh, these operators also commute and uh, they so they have uh, also a nice uh, solution for the joint eigenvalue problem. This is so-called Cheretnik kernel. So if I take a spectral parameter lambda, then there is again a unique analytic function on R to the N, which satisfies the joint eigenvalue problem for these operators, again with normalization. And uh, this solution is not now, not in contrast to the uh, Dunkel case, it's not holomorphic in both variables, not entire in both variables. It's holomorphic in the spectral variable, uh, but in the space variable, one has to be careful. We can write it in the space variable as a function of e to the t, f of t equals g of e to the t. And if we do it like that, then g is uh, holomorphic on uh, yeah, as a function of 
uh, of e to the t on uh, uh, the half space uh, where the real part of z is larger than zero. So this is not trivial. Here one needs uh, uh, generalization of, of the complex ground for, for, uh, uh, for spherical functions. So uh, this is deep results by Grotz and Optum. Uh, and, uh, but, but then one has a nice domain here where, where this function is holomorphic. So, and then again, one uh, takes uh, uh, Y group means now here, and this is just considered a symmetric group, Y group means in the space variable and gets the so-called hypergeometric function F. And uh, now in the geometric cases, uh, which are related to our symmetric cones, um, uh, these hypergeometric functions are actually the spherical functions of the symmetric cone. So uh, this is now not for the semi-simple case. So, so I have a free variable in addition uh, uh, implemented here, which I did not mention here. Yeah, there's an additional factor, but there's, uh, this is a very, very small difference with, with uh, the notion uh, by, by Optum. Okay, so we have this uh, geretnik kernel and hypergeometric function. And now uh, to work with polynomials, I need a modification of the geretnik operators uh, by this exponential substitution. If I take the geretnik operators in, basi uh, in standard uh, basis uh, directions and modify just by some constant, apply this to G, then I get an operator slanted dj f applied to f evaluated at e to the t for j from 1 to n. And these slanted Cheretnik operators uh, uh, are, these are the Cheretnik operators as they are usually used by people working with, with uh, symmetric polynomials, Sahi forest and so on. They, they're interesting in this case because they are given in terms of the rational Dunkel operators Tj in the basis directions. And then there are some uh, yeah, constant term plus uh, these reflection uh, transpositions. So reflection terms, SI j's, simply the transposition of the i's and the j's coordinate. And you see dj maps polynomials to polynomials because the Dunkel operators are homogeneous of degree minus one and they preserve the degree of homogeneity. Now, uh, there are nice eigenfunctions for these, uh, uh, which are special cases of the Cheretnik kernel, and these are the non-symmetric check polynomials. So the action of the slanted Cheretnik operators on monomials is triangular, upper triangular. So if I take any composition, eta, multi-index, and apply dj to x to the eta, then this is reproduced with some constant factor, and then there come lower terms with respect to a suitable partial order. Partial order on this a set of compositions of the same weight as eta. So we get still here on the right side a, a, a polynomial of the same, which is homogeneous of the same degree. And now one can prove, this is basically due to Optum, that there's a unique basis of the real polynomials which are of the form with leading term x to the eta plus lower terms in, dom in this partial order, so-called dominance order, and at the same time, eigenfunctions of the Cheretnik operators with these eigenvalues we had before here as leading terms. And these are the non-symmetric Jack polynomials of index 1 over k. They are homogeneous. If k equals zero, then the Cheretnik operators are just the usual partial uh, directional derivatives, and uh, then uh, the e eaters are just x to the eta, the monomials. One gets the symmetric check polynomials by while group taking while group means from the non-symmetric check polynomials. And what is important, the uh, uh, non-symmetric check polynomials are uh, related with the Cheretnik kernel. They occur in special cases for special uh, 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 spectral variables. Uh, they are just uh, given by the Cheretnik kernel at this particular modified spectral variable. Yeah? We have the eta bar. The eta, is, eta bar just has these components, eta j bar. We have a shift. 
and then we need a normalization because g at, at one has value one. So this is a similar situation as we had before with the spherical functions and the spherical polynomials on a symmetric cone. Now uh, our result is the following. Uh, the first result is a Laplace transform formula for the check polynomials. Hmm? Is that question? No. <laughs> Okay, so the first uh, is, a is a Laplace transform formula for check polynomials, uh, which uh, is a, recently it's a paper in the archive with Dominic Brennigan. So we take again our notations, mu naught, k times n minus one and the delta function, e is the Dunkel kernel and j is the Bessel function. And then if we take a non-symmetric check polynomial, e eta, and take its Laplace transform, Again, uh, multiplied with the power of the delta function, real part of mu large enough so that we get nice convergence, integrate against the Dunkel weight, then this is reproduced at uh, the argument, uh, inverted argument times delta z to the minus mu. And here there's in the gamma factor, which shows up here, this is again this multivariate gamma function, uh, of of McDonald, then not eta shows up, uh, but the unique partition uh, in the orbit of eta, so which is obtained by permuting the entries of eta, so that we get a partition. Yeah, and then you know, also shift. And if we take, uh, if we symmetrize, uh, then uh, is that a question? I, no. Okay. If we symmetrize, then we get. Uh, uh, transform formula for the symmetric check polynomials, where we can also take the Bessel function instead of the Dunkel kernel. Yeah, but this Laplace transform formula, exactly as it was conjectured by McDonald, this is the 0f0k zero zero function uh, by McDonald we had before. And uh, this can everything be made completely rigorous uh, because when the real part of z is larger than zero, uh, this exponential kernels decay uh, exponentially, uh, the Dunkel kernel and the Bessel function decay exponentially, so uh, everything converges very nicely. So formula one was is contained in a paper by Baker and Forrester, but uh, uh, the proof is not rigorous, convergence issues remained open, and our proof is completely different. So we think our proof is, is the nicer one. And the proof for this uh, uh, formula in the non-symmetric case, which is actually easier than the proof in the symmetric case. So the non-symmetric polynomials are sometimes easier to handle than the symmetric ones because they have uh, more, sometimes nicer properties, uh, is in the first step, one uses Laplace transform techniques uh, to transform the statement to an equivalent one involving Dunkel operators. So, and the statement is, I take the function delta x to the minus mu and I apply a Dunkel operator to it, which is obtained from the check polynomial e eta by replacing the coordinate functions xi by the Dunkel operators ti. And then here one again gets sort of a reproduction of delta x to the minus mu multiplied by e eta one of x and some factor where a generalized Pochhammer symbol shows up. And then the second step is uh, to prove this, uh, I mean, the Dunkel operators, the rational ones, here the, really the rational ones are showing up, uh, but they are, uh, the, the properties are very well known and, and, and uh, nice to handle. And uh, uh, the next step is to prove this, this identity star by induction on eta. Uh, this means that we gener uh, generate all uh, compositions eta from zero by applying certain operators. One kind of operators is just to apply fundamental transpositions, si, i plus one. So we exchange coordinates xi and xi plus one. And the other operator is the raising operator of Knob and Sahi, where phi of eta is... Uh, given by, yeah, we take eta, but we cut off the first component, shift it uh, to the very, to the, uh, to the last uh, position and add one. So here the weight increases by one and applying to functions is similar. Uh, we increase the homogeneity degree by one. And again, here we uh, 
uh, the, the arguments are uh, permuted in a certain fashion. And then uh, the non-symmetric check polynomials have nice uh, properties under these uh, under, under this raising operator. So applying the raising operator to E eta gives E with index raising operator applied to eta. And there's a second recursion. So E uh, with the index uh, eta modified by, by a fundamental transposition is obtained from E eta and the application of the fundamental transposition to E eta, at least if, if, uh, if these are ordered. Uh, in this way, and and uh, so by these uh, man, uh, by these recursions, uh, one obtains all e eta, and then one goes uh, into that here, and shows that this uh, rim is valid actually by uh, for for all uh, uh, for all compositions eta. Okay, and then uh, so uh, the second step is to obtain Laplace transform formulas for uh, the Chevrolet kernel and for the hypergeometric function. So, uh, and this will be, if you take it for the hypergeometric function, then exactly uh, generalization of the Laplace transform formula for the spherical functions on a symmetric cone. And in a sense, uh, the Laplace transform of the Chiaretni kernel can be understood as a generalization of the Laplace transform formulas for, for the, yeah, just for the power functions. Yeah? So we take the Chiaretni kernel with spectral parameter lambda and we take the Laplace transform of it in the same way. Then we get uh, again with a gamma shift, where now the row, the while vector is showing up, uh, the Chiaretni kernel at argument one over z, uh, again modif modified as before. And the same formula holds by symmetrization for the hypergeometric function. And then we can also replace the Dunkel kernel by the Bessel function. So, uh, yeah, the proof is uh, based on the connection between the hypergeometric, uh, the, the Chiaretni kernel and the non-symmetric check polynomials. Yeah, so that's the non-symmetric checks were obtained from the hypergeometric function for special, for special spectral variables. And this, it's a little bit tricky, but one sees uh, it's not completely straightforward. So not for all composition, but one sees that uh, for all lambda from uh, this shifted similarities of partitions, um, this statement is true, follows from uh, what we had before, the Laplace transform formula of the non-symmetric checks. And then one does analytic continuation with the multivariable variant of Carson's theorem. If we have a holomorphic function in the positive half space, yeah, classical theorem here, just in, in the uh, uh, positive uh, complex space, which is zero for all integers and is of moderate exponential growth uh, with a constant less than pi, then f is identical zero. This can be applied here and then we get this general result. Now, a first application is a of, of uh, these Laplace transform formulas, actually of the Laplace transform formula for the non-symmetric checks is uh, for the inversion theorem for the Dunkel Laplace transform of post middle type. Uh, so I'm a bit short in time, so I don't go into too much details. So we had the Cauchy inversion theorem first. There's an inversion theorem which avoids integration for the classical Laplace transform. And this is just by taking derivatives of the Laplace transform <laughs> on a certain limit. And this can be done in the Dunkel setting as well. So if f is bounded and uh, measurable and continuous at some point xi, then we get f xi from its Laplace transform, applying Dunkel operators delta t to the power nu, nu is a natural number, uh, evaluating that at nu divided by xi, and then multiply with a factor and take the limit nu to infinity. And so this uh, is a counterpart actually of a similar result by Faro and Gindikin for symmetric cones. The idea of the proof is a bit similar uh, with Levy's continuity theorem, uh, but uh, in detail one has uh, to, to use, um, yeah, actually expansions and, and all the results we had before. Then um, second important expansion is uh, really about hypergeometric series and the Laplace transforms. 
So we did it for symmetric and non-symmetric cases. The non-symmetric check polynomials can, similar to the symmetric we had before, which were normalized in this way, non-symmetric ones can be also normalized in this way. And then one defines hypergeometric series. Uh, the symmetric case is well known in the literature. So this is generalizations of the one usual one variable hypergeometric series, but we have here uh, two arguments. Uh, as we had already the zero F zero, that was a special instance, yeah. And there come uh, products of of uh, Pochhammer symbols, multivariable Pochhammer symbols, uh, P in uh, in the numerator, Q in the denominator, depending on the number of parameters, and these products of of two check polynomials. And similar in the non-symmetric case uh, with the non-symmetric check polynomials. So if you take W equals one, then one factor just vanishes. And if the parameters are geometric coming from symmetric cones, then this PFQ series is just the classical hypergeometric series on symmetric cones or hypergeometric series of matrix arguments, which uh, have been studied since the 50s and which are usually usually written in terms of spherical polynomials. Yeah, they're useful, useful in multivariate statistics and there's maybe also mentioned work of Gross and Richards uh, in this direction. So uh, we have here two variables. In the geometric cases, two variables are irrelevant and not necessary because in the geometric cases, the check polynomials, which are spherical polynomials, satisfy a product formula. The spherical functions always do, but this is not known in general cases. So in general cases, the two variable hypergeometric functions we have here are really new, something new, something different. Now we settled the convergence issues quite nicely. Uh, so for P less than Q, having two not too many factors on top, uh, then uh, both are entire functions in both arguments. For P equals Q plus one, like two F one, both are holomorphic in a polydisc, and for p greater than q plus one, both series are uh, usually divergent apart from the different trivial point. In symmetric cone cases, uh, the convergence properties of p of q are absolutely well known. But for general K, uh, even for the symmetric PFQ, uh, this P equals Q plus one case was only partially settled. So there are important special cases. We saw already the zero as zero is a dunkel bezel function of type A n minus one with multiplicity K. This was the starting point of our connection to dunkel theory. The zero K zero is the associated dunkel kernel. 0 F1 uh, has one parameter in, in the denominator. And if we take it at squared arguments, then again, we get a Bessel function, but now a Dunkel Bessel function of type B with certain multiplicity parameters. So it's associated with root system BN, which has roots plus minus EI and plus minus EI plus minus EJ. And uh, the parameter k from the check polynomials sits on the long roots and on the short roots uh, we have the, this parameter nu of the hypergeometric series comes in and it's uh, shifted. And the 2f1 in one variable can be expressed in terms of heckman optum hypergeometric functions of type BCN, very particular instances which goes back to, to Behrens and optum. Okay, and then I would like to finish with Laplace transform identities for hypergeometric series. So, and these are actually only now, could only now be settled for P smaller than Q, where everything behaves, uh, entire, uh, the series are entire functions. We get a new hypergeometric functions, which uh, more, uh, more parameters by Laplace transform of uh, already known hypergeometric functions with smaller number of parameters. So if I will Laplace transform PKQ, uh, then uh, with, uh, with an, and we take in delta X an additional parameter mu prime, complex parameter mu prime, 
Then we get a P plus one KQ where the additional parameter mu prime shows up uh, in the numerator parameters in addition. And the same formula holds for, for the hypergeometric, the symmetric uh, theories. And if P equals Q, uh, then uh, we have certain restrictions on, on the arguments Z and Y for which uh, uh, this is the case, because then the convergence properties are not so good. So uh, in the symmetric cone case uh, with W equals one, these formulas are well known. And actually, they were used originally, they were used by Hertz, uh, who started uh, this kind of analysis on, on matrix spaces in order to define the hypergeometric series recursively. But in the general case, so with arbitrary multi parameters K, this uh, was never, could not be settled. And of course, now with having the Laplace transform of the Czech polynomials, uh, uh, this is not hard to get. Yeah, so so formally it's clear, but but one uh, still has to justify uh, all these uh, facts. So now I do not have the time to talk about risk distributions and thing, things like that. So time is over as far as I see. So one can do quite a lot of more analysis. One can study analogs of, of risk distributions on symmetric cones. One can also study analogs of zeta distributions, which are then related to Dunkel theory of type B. But uh, here is the point where I would like to finish and, and, and just give you the references of uh, two uh, papers which were uh, used here. So the second one is, is uh, more parts are, are from the second one, which is uh, uh, yeah, uh, on the archives in a few weeks. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much for an interesting talk. Maybe we have some have some time for questions and remarks. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, just uh, one question. Uh, this recursion formula which you use uh, for non-symmetric Czech polynomials. So is that typical of uh, root system AN? Uh, no, uh, moment, moment, let me to see. Uh, which which formula do we, uh, uh, you mean this with the phi operator here? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. That's very specific for root system A. Yeah. So I I I, I mean there's a similar I think for for root system B there also exists some work by Sahi uh, where where um, I, I think they can be generalized to root system B but I I do not know now any details and I'm not complete. Yes, it can. Yeah, I know. I know it can can be done, um, but I do not know how it, it looks a bit more complicated, but it's not a, a, a really very general uh, construction. Yeah. Yeah, you see, it's always uh, everything is also in coordinates. Yeah, so <laughs> it's already. Yes, yes, yeah. I see a okay. lot of proofs using such things, uh, even for integral formulas for uh, Heckman of them have geometric functions of type A and there are some some result where this uses this kind of recursion relation. Uh, which integral formulas do you mean? Uh, I don't remember the other's name. Some years back there was some like, integral like formula Kunkov, for... Like Kunkov or Shansky formulas? Ah, yes, I think oh, so. Well, what, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't exactly remember the... Uh, yes. Mm. Yeah, this uh, 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 might be the case. Yeah, I do not know precisely now how, how they do... Uh, where these uh, basically Gelf and Zetlin patterns are are involved, and in, where you have a recursive integral representation, you mean that one? Yes, yes. Uh, so recursive with respect to the rank, yeah. Uh, yeah, or, exactly. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. do they really use this operators? Well, they probably use different operators, but the, yes, yes, but. You know, many proofs on an types seem to use some kind of recursion formula, and that's yes, uh, yes. That's uh, and I don't find that for other root systems. So you know, I was just yeah, curious yeah. about that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. As I said, for root system B, the, there are some uh, some uh, generalizations. Yeah, this, uh, but but for root system B, it, it's hopeless to, I, from my point of view, it's hopeless to 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 get. Uh, to get a, a, a reasonable and meaningful Laplace transform, yeah, 
So everything works out nicely because it comes uh, from the symmetric cones in a sense. Yeah, it yes. generalizes the radial analysis on symmetric cones. So it's already natural to expect that it works. For root system B, for other root systems, one would first have uh, would need a natural a natural setting. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, root system B also comes in in the analysis on symmetric cones. For example, when you go to representations uh, and and you look, for example, in things like you can generalize theta distributions, yeah. Then this works with root system B. Yeah, this is also so. My PhD student is uh, also has some work on this, okay, uh, but okay. this is not yet uh, not yet uh, finished. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. So there's some more questions. Yeah, mm. looks like there are no questions. Yeah, I'll, let me stop recording first. Oh yeah, yeah. In case maybe we can unmute and thank.